Fascinating case here because Sage Steel is still with ESPN and their parent company, company Disney, while this uh, lawsuit goes through the court system in Connecticut where uh, she may have an ace up her sleeve based on Connecticut law, but there is a lot of discretion on the side of ESPN in this filing. Can you kind of explain what's going on and how you're, you're fascinated to see how this all plays out? Yeah, so Steele argues that even though she wasn't fired or suspended, she was essentially demoted in the aftermath of her comments. She had comments about former President Obama and comments about ESPN's COVID policy that she, that she uh, objected to. And the company, she says, punished her in the form of having her apologize and not giving her assignments. She also talked about feeling bullied. So it's an interesting case. One is that she's still there and she wasn't actually formally punished as far as we can tell. Secondly, she argues that she's being treated differently, that when some of her colleagues ridiculed former President Trump, that they didn't suffer the same consequences that she's suffering. So she argues that this is a double standard and it's, it's really political discretion in a way that ESPN's policy is to punish those who take a maybe a more conservative viewpoint than a progressive viewpoint. The, the difficulty for her is that ESPN is a private company owned by Disney and private employers have a lot of discretion in regulating the speech of employees. It's true she has a First Amendment right, but that doesn't mean she doesn't have an employment contract. She does have an employment contract. And ESPN has a workplace policy and a social media policy that gives the company a lot of discretion as to regulating speech of employees. But as you noted, Connecticut has an unusual law in that it essentially extends First Amendment protections to private sector employees, though the caveat to that is that if the employee's speech interferes with their employment, the company can still punish the employee. So my guess is ESPN, well, we'll see what ESPN argues. One could be this case should be dismissed because her employment contract might have an arbitration provision. A lot of media contracts have arbitration provisions or a mediation provision that says you can't go to court, you got to go to arbitration first. Secondly, they'll, they'll probably argue that she wasn't actually sanctioned. Doesn't appear that she, she certainly wasn't fired, she wasn't suspended. Uh, thirdly, the company will say it has discretion in how it applies its policies. And they'll also argue that may, maybe that her comments were disruptive to the company. When it's one thing to make a political comment about a former president, it's another to oppose the company's HR policy on COVID in a public forum. They, they might have felt that that crossed a line. So we'll see. How unusual is it to see this where a, a current employer uh, is being sued by the employee that still works for them, is on camera for this network? Um, just uh, issues aside, if you're just looking at the, the lawsuit itself, how crazy is it based on what you've been reading? Yeah, it's pretty odd. I mean, certainly their employees are, have sued empl employers over different things, including workplace safety. So an employer employee gets hurt on the job. There are union uh, management disputes that have legal qualities to them. But to have a broadcast company sued by an on-air broadcaster, it's not as if she's a former employee. It's a former employee, then it's sort of, okay, I get it. But to have her go to the workplace, be on air, while suing over the things that she has said on air and how ESPN has treated her, it's pretty interesting. And she has, from what I understand, an employment contract that goes another couple of years, at least that's what the Washington Post has reported. So it's not as if she's going anywhere unless she negotiates a buyout. And, and maybe this is, this is part of the strategy, that maybe her aim is to negotiate a favorable buyout. I have no idea, but it's certainly not a typical set of facts. 